Hey guys, welcome to more Graph Transformation Fun for A-Level. So, in this one we are looking at stretches, and in particular, stretches along the y-axis. So, hopefully you've watched the video on reflections, where we were either multiplying a function by minus 1, or the x in the function by minus 1, which results in reflections. Stretches are really an extension of that. Here we are multiplying the function by a number that isn't minus 1. So when we do that, uh, what's going to happen? Either the function stretches up and down along the y-axis, or we can also squish it together uh, along the y-axis. So we are going to look at the different types along the y-axis in this video. In the next video, we will look at stretches along the x-axis. So, what we're doing then, we are multiplying the functions by a number a, where a is not equal to 0 or 1. If it was equal to 0, y would just equal 0, so that would be pointless. And if it was equal to 1, we would just have the original function, there would be no transformation. So again, it would be pointless. So, if a is greater than 1, what happens is the graph stretches up and down, so the y values of any important points get multiplied by the scale factor of what we are multiplying the function by. So, for example, if we had y equals 2 f of x, then all of the y values get multiplied by 2. So y intercepts get multiplied by 2, y coordinates of maximums and minimums get multiplied by 2. x values, x coordinates do not change when we are doing these transformations. So any x intercepts or x coordinates of maximums or minimums stay the same. It's only y ones that change. If a is some number less than minus 1, so it's negative, what happens is the function is reflected and then stretched. So for example, y equals minus 2 f of x would first of all reflect f of x and then stretch that by uh, whatever the number a is. So, for example, y equals minus 2 f of x basically multiplies every y value by minus 2. So we'll see that. Uh, and then if a is between minus 1 and 1, but not equal to 0, so it's fractional, what that does is squash the graph together along the y-axis. So it's like somebody has put their hands on top and bottom of the function and pushed it in together. So we're also going to look at that. Now before we get on to quadratics and cubics, we're going to look at these different types of transformation on y equals sine of x, because sine of x is really, really useful for illustrating what is going on. So let's do just that. Okay, first up then, so in all of these, the red uh, sketch is y equals sine of x, and the blue is the transformed one. So it's going to be stretched. Okay, so our first one then here, y equals 3 sine of x. So hopefully you're fairly familiar by now with the sine graph. Although you might not have seen it yet at A level, depending on what order you're being taught. So, the sine graph has peaks at y equals 1 and troughs at y equals minus 1. So, y equals 3 sine x has peaks at 3 and troughs at minus 3. So, it's been stretched up and down, all of the y values have been multiplied 
by a scale factor of 3. So the ones at y equals 1 have gone to y equals 3. The ones at y equals minus 1 have gone to y equals minus 3. And that gives us a transformed function that looks something like the blue curve. Okay, secondly, so this time we've got y equals minus 3 sine of x. So what's happened this time? First of all, the function has been reflected in the x-axis. So that's what the negative part of the multiplication does. And then it's been stretched by a scale factor of 3. So this time, the peaks that were at y equals 1 have been multiplied by minus 3, if you like. So the peaks that were at y equals 1 are now troughs at y equals minus 3. And what were the troughs at y equals minus 1 are now peaks at y equals positive 3. And then finally, when we have y equals 1 half sine x, what's happened here then? The y values have been multiplied by 1 half, so the peaks have been pushed down towards the x-axis, the troughs have been pushed up towards the x-axis, so the peaks are now at uh, y equals 1 half, and the troughs are now at y equals minus 1 half, so the graph has been squashed together, and that is because we have a fractional uh, scale factor, or well, the function has been multiplied by a fraction. So that's what happens then. Okay, now we're going to look at quadratics and cubics. Okay, so for these then I've already put in the sketch of the transform function, because we all know what my drawing is like. So what we're going to do there is go through and label the important coordinate points. So again, our red functions here are f of x, our blue lines are our transformed functions. So, this time then we have some quadratic y equals f of x, and we are transforming it to y equals 2 f of x. So, first of all then, f of x is a quadratic, it has x-intercepts at minus 1 and positive 2, a y-intercept of minus 2, and a minimum at 3 halves uh, minus 5 quarters. So, very important to remember when we are transforming functions like this, the x-intercepts, or every x-coordinate, stays the same. It's only the y-coordinates that change. So, the x-intercepts are still at minus 1 and positive 2. Now the y-intercept is going to get multiplied from minus 2 to minus 4. So we're multiplying that by 2 because we've got 2 f of x. So the y-intercept is now minus 4 and the coordinates of the minimum well, the x-coordinate is still going to be 3 halves. The y-coordinate is 2 times minus 5 quarters, which is minus 5 halves. So what we can notice there is that that's actually made our function longer and thinner. So the arms are quadratic have come in. The reason for that is everything is happening twice as fast vertically. Okay, let's look at the next one. Okay, so this time f of x is the same function. So again, we've got x intercepts of minus 1, positive 2, our y intercept of minus 2, and our minimum are 3 halves minus 5 quarters. So, this time we are transforming to minus one half 
f of x. So that's going to do two things. It's going to reflect our function in the x-axis and it's going to multiply the y-coordinates by one half or if we do it all in one go, the y-coordinates get multiplied by minus one half. So the x-coordinates stay the same. So those are still at minus one and two for the x-intercepts. The y-intercept is now at minus two times minus one half. Minus two times minus one half is positive one. So our y-intercept is now at positive one and our minimum has now become a maximum. We've gone from a happy quadratic to an unhappy quadratic. Now the x-coordinate of this guy is still three halves and the y-coordinate is going to be minus one half times minus five quarters. So it's going to be positive. A half times five quarters is five eighths. So our y coordinate of what is now our maximum is five eighths. So those are two examples of how we transform quadratics by a stretch along the y axis. Now we're going to look at two cubics. Okay, here then this time uh, f of x is a cubic. Now we have x intercepts at minus 1, 1 and 2. Our y intercept is at 2. And we have a minimum at 3 halves minus 5 eighths. Now, what we're going to be finding, or sketching, is y equals minus 2 f of x. So, First of all, remember, the x-intercepts are still the same. So this is still 2, this is still 1, and this guy is still minus 1. Not quite sure where this 1 has gone. There we go. Okay, so what's going to happen to the y-values? Well, they're going to be multiplied by minus 2. So the y-intercept was at 2. 2 times minus 2 is going to take us down here to minus 4. Uh, then our minimum has become a maximum. So the x-coordinate of this guy is still going to be exactly the same. So 3 halves And the y-coordinate is going to be minus 2 times minus 5 eighths. Minus 2 times minus 5 eighths is positive 5 quarters. So there's our sketch of y equals minus 2 f of x. Good times. Okay then, final example for this video. So I'm not going to worry about reciprocals. Not much really happens when you stretch reciprocals. If they have a y-intercept, just multiply it by whatever you're multiplying the uh, function by. So, this time then we've got the same cubic, y equals f of x. And this time, we are sketching y equals one half x. So this time we have a positive fractional scale factor so the graph isn't being reflected it's just being squished together so it's being squashed along the y-axis so all of the y-coordinates get multiplied by one half so we have exactly the same x-intercepts minus one one and two our y-intercept is going to go down from two to 1, because a half times 2 is 1, and then the coordinates of our minimum over here is still going to be 3 halves, and then it's going to be 1 half times 5 eighths, 1 half times 5 eighths, 
one half times minus five eighths is minus five sixteenths. So that is now the y coordinate of our minimum. So there's our transformed cubic at that time. Okay, guys, I hope you found it useful. In the next video, we are looking at stretches along the x axis, and then we are done, thank God, with transformations of graphs because these are taking me ages to do. Good times. See you then.